start your Sunday mornings, but I start mine with chores. We got the dog out, but I get a lot of packages, guys. Doing these builds, uh, you know, having four different vehicles that we're trying to put base in. And other things, you know, like a black Jeep way back there. Doing all of it. You just get so many packages. Uh, like there's a Rock Auto box, but we're doing that. Give you a little recap. Um, Friday, y'all know Yellow Wolf is uh, like my favorite artist, I guess we'd call him. Because, I mean, he raps, he sings, he does rock country. What the hell ever. But I went and seen Yellow Wolf at a place called Suck Bang Blow little biker hangout in Myrtle Inlet, which is just right south of Myrtle Beach. And it was crazy. Yeah, thousands of people there. Like, it was shoulder to shoulder, like, just, yeah. I'll throw some clips in of what happened. I'm just going to say that uh, I started out with, uh, they, had, they have a big burnout pit there for bikes, and, uh, yeah, the first four or five bikes, nothing. You know, I'm like 15 foot back from them. But this one bike, it made me look like this. Yeah. Apparently the rubber come off the tire. I didn't even feel it pelt me in the face. So uh, I walked around looking, looking like I had black face on. Yeah, it took a bunch of tub of towel to get that off. <laughs> but... Anyway, yeah, we're going to get on with everything. I did meet an awesome guy named Tommy. He's, he said he's my, my biggest fan. And uh, it was crazy because I wound up tattooing him Friday. And then he came back yesterday, Saturday. Got a demo and everything. And uh, he wanted my signature tattooed on him, which... How the hell can you even charge a guy for something like that? Like, you can't... I'm, I mean, I tattooed it on him, you know, because he seriously wanted it, but there was no way in hell that I could be so honored for something and charge the man to do it. But anyway, I got some more boxes to burn, and then we got to start this weekend video, guys. So, yeah, let, let's get it. All right, so I'm ready. I've pulled this top plate off, and this car is Bose. It's got six by nines in the door. Itty bitty speakers like this in the corners or smaller. This is a damn center channel. But for doing all this stuff, y'all remember my Timu unboxing with all these uh, dash kit tools? Hey, they come in handy, guys. I ain't gonna lie. For $3, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with it. This Rogue has navigation. Uh, yeah, you can see there. The SD card for map. And uh, it's got, you know, the hands-free with steering wheel controls. Um, backup camera. So, yeah, the install kit for the N-Dash, it's, it's a lot, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's a lot for me to hook up. Um, I did the Meta Access uh, ASW1, I think is the kit I got for the steering wheel controls. I had to get a backup camera adapter, an antenna adapter, wiring harness, and yeah, I spent an hour last night trying to wire stuff up. So, anyway, I'm going to get started trying to pull all this out. Uh, wish me luck because I'm used to working on older vehicles, not newer. So, I, uh, I might even have my window tent guy coming by because he does a lot of the the meta uh steering wheel control thing he did one on a harley the other day same damn kit on a harley davidson so the uh you know your your hand controls on each side would work volume and shit so he's pretty good with it but anyway he's he's coming by it is starting to rain as you can see so i told that mug to wear deodorant in case we stuck up in here together with the windows up so anyway guys wish me luck this is that center channel speaker. You see, it's got the Bose logo in the center, but that ain't the crazy part. The basket's plastic, but it's a Neo. <laughs> it's a little Neo, guys. That's kind of, yeah, that's interesting. 
It says it's made in Indonesia on it. But yeah, anyway, I gotta get back to work. Nice. Yeah, here's what I got. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to connect to this. And uh, I don't know what this, this, I don't even know what that is. I mean, that's a weird plug. But the crazy thing is, is this is my antenna harness. So that's my antenna wire. I'm not sure if that had something to do with navigation. This little plug is driving the wife crazy. Because it's just a blue plug. And with it, the pink dot. Yeah, to me, it looks like uh, optical. To me, it looks like something optical. I'm not sure. But uh, this was the backup camera wires. Um, yeah, this, I have no clue. It, obviously, I'm not using it. But uh, this is my main radio harness. So I had to hook a couple wires from this access into it. Um, I had to put this on the radio harness, this pigtail here to plug this jack into. So, yeah. But I think I got everything ready to go at this point. I'm not 100%, so at this point, I kind of need to get the radio and come, I need to take the factory radio and the one that goes in here and the brackets because they're adjustable brackets and kind of get the depth set to put in this old Max Speeding Rods uh, head unit. And as you can tell, it's still raining, so it's really stuffy up in this car. Do not bash me for using butt connectors on my radio harness, guys. Don't. Hell no. I'm a redneck in a backyard. I'm not a professional. Back in the day, I used to splice that shit together, just twist the wires together, throw black tape on it. And, uh, yeah, I've moved up from the black tape to that. I tried to tape all this last night with Tesla tape and get it nice and neat. But I got four different harnesses that go together you know steering wheel control there's only one wire being used out of my uh rca outputs and it is actually a pink wire that says amp so i gotta have just that one wire go into this harness to the blue wire to turn the factory amp on out of my uh head unit harness there's an antenna wire here but it has to be hooked to this antenna adapter. I don't even know. So yeah, amp C there is has to hook to here. That'll be my remote wire in the future when I bypass all the factory shit and put a system in here. But yeah, but there's just way too much stuff to put together. I'm used to working on old shit like that or that or even that 99 back there. This shit here with steering wheel controls, no. For me and steering wheel controls, on my black Jeep, that turns on cruise control. But anyway, I'm going to get back to work. So, guys, um, yeah, I was going to go over some stuff with you. First and foremost, this is the bracket that comes with it. And as you can see, the screw holes are a mile from lining up. Uh, good job on that, China. You know. So, yeah, the... And that's a meta kit. I mean, that's not like your your cheap Metra. Yeah, Metra. That's not like a cheap kit. So that's made for any aftermarket radio. Except for this cheap Chinese stuff. So what I wound up doing is taking the factory bracket. And there again, only one hole will line up. Which, if you get it tight enough, that'll work once it's in the dash. But, here again, we got another issue. You'd think that they'd make the outer diameter of this standard to all double dens. Because it don't want to really fit this hole. Not at all. So, I'm thinking, I got everything. Why not just throw this thing in until I can actually order the wife a brand name radio? And I'm not wanting to bash on this cheap Chinese shit. And still Max, still Max Speeding Raj is going to be mad when I give this video. But I'm going to keep it real with you guys. This shit don't fit. Uh, this is standard distance that you would use 
on pretty much any aftermarket radio. And, you know, the diameter, as you can see, screw hole, screw hole. So that's made for the, 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 even a Bosch radio is going to have this shit space like that. Even Bosch would. Dual, yes, they would have it. Sony, Pioneer, JVC, they will all have it. This cheap Wong Pao, uh, you know, there, there is a, a big difference between the spacing of these two holes and that. So, even this bracket here, I just showed you, these two holes on this bracket line up with, or they're made for this radio. The two screw holes in the radio line up with this bracket. So, this cheap-ass in-dash, I mean, would I recommend this thing after this? No, hell no. Hell no. It might be a good radio after you get it installed, but it's just not worth it because what I'm going to have to do is off the top, these brackets will not work with this Wong Pal radio because these screw holes, one should be further back, I'm assuming, because like this is the left side. This is obviously the front. And can you hold the phone and film? So I can show them this on this old Wong Pal here. Even to get to where the screw holes would line up, I'm this far out. So, yeah. If I do some measuring from the front of the radio to the first screw hole is, we're going to call that roughly one and a quarter. And they're actually uh, one and three quarter almost back. So that's your first red flag there. I mean, that's just a red flag if I've ever seen a red flag. Yeah. These these cheap ass radios don't don't know. I was thinking that this was gonna be like the same as the DS18 Android radio. My buddy installs them and he never has a problem. Uh I don't know, guys. I I just you know, they sent me this thing for free to do a video on. I did an unboxing and it got a lot of people like curious about it, but I'm going I'm to keep it real with you guys. They probably ain't going to send me anything else after this shit, but God dang, look at how shitty this is made. This shit don't line up. I'm literally going to have to take this bracket, take some of my itty bitty Dremel die grinders and Try to grind these holes inward so I can get two in so I can get adjustment to move the bracket up or down to line it up, to line this up with the uh, hole and the old dash here. But if we take the dash here that I've watched tons of YouTube videos of people installing radios, they fit. And look at it. This shit, it, it ain't really... Like, you get the top end, the bottom ain't going to go. Uh, yeah. Like, you get the bottom end, the top don't, don't want to, don't, if you bend it, you might be able to get it in there. But that's what I'm saying, guys. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I'm fighting it. You know, that thing should slide in good. I don't know, guys. I ain't I ain't trying to hate on the Asians because, I mean, everything we use comes from China, but uh, I think this is leftover shit. They just throw together or something. I don't know. But I'm not even sure I want to put this radio in now. I might just stick the damn factory one back in the car and order Kenwood, JVC. You know, them are my favorites right there is Kenwood and JVC. But, uh, I just, I don't even think it's worth it to try to put this in. I really don't. I really honestly don't. Yeah, yeah, I'm done with My this. My homeboy shit. Dustin. He does a whole lot of like newer car audio installation as well as window tinting. So what he's going to do is... uh a little fabrication. We're doing a little fabrication to the factory bracket off of that. We got it where to almost fit in there, so 
Uh, don't judge this head unit just yet until we get 100% uh, done with this installation. <laughs> but he over here helping. But, all right, I'll be back. Oh, stop that for a quick look. My, my homeboy Dustin come over. He helped me. You know, I guess I had everything right. The only thing we haven't played with yet is steering wheel control. And we put it all back together. This sits a hair higher right here than there, guys. But we put the, the GPS antenna there. The home screen of this thing shows your mile per hour and stuff. We just got CarPlay hooked up. Um, everything's working. Sub's working. Center channel is all working. Uh, the wife's got maps pulling up on here. So, does it fit? You be the judge, guys. You be the judge. I mean, is it perfect? No, but it wouldn't work with the Metro bracket. It definitely wouldn't uh, work with the, the factory brackets. We had to like cut them and try to get it moved as far forward as we could. The volume knob is no longer touching, which we had to put one of these little blue pry bars in there and keep prying it over. This shows you the home screen. The car play. So it took it a minute, but it did sync up with CarPlay just fine. So we're going to test it for a little bit and see how it does, but we got to make sure steering wheel controls are working. Uh, we got to set all that up and I'll be back. Yeah, guys, I done screwed up. Um, the steering wheel control wasn't working and uh, there was one wire, actually not from the box, but in the instructions for the box on the car side harness that needed to be ground, grounded that I didn't ground. Here's the grounds, because Nissans don't actually have ground system. So you've got to ground everything you put in, but we're still trying to get the steering wheel controls to work, even though old Jerry screwed up. All right, we got steering wheel controls. They're all working. Uh, the, all we got so far is volume, and we were happy with that. Being that this is a generic radio, it isn't on their list. But this thing has something really cool. The more I play with it, the more I like it. If you go into the settings, you got car settings here. And we're going to hit that. And then if you go into uh, assembly, you got steering wheel learning. And that blue check means that it has learned them too. But that don't mean crap if it ain't set with this right. And I had to call Access, and I definitely want to give them a shout out because I called them on a Sunday. A tech guy answered the phone and walked us through what you have to do to set it up for these radios. And Dustin said it was good for him because he does this shit a lot in a lot of customer cars. And it taught him how to program it to your off-brand radios which there's a way you do the configuration of your volume up, volume down a certain number of times, and it can be one through 23 for a particular radio to work. The guy on the phone said most of these cheap Androids is number 11, and it was number 11, it worked. So now we're gonna try to do track up, track down, and leave it the hell alone if we can. <laughs> but that's the learning process there which we thought it was kind of cool that it worked the way it would. Yeah, and the bad thing is the track skip didn't really work on the stock radio. But um, we might only be able to get volume up and volume down here. So, yep, none of that's working. And it didn't work on the fact like the factory head unit. It wasn't wanting to work with it just volume up and down so hey we got phone call and phone in might work nope. well we can call somebody <laughs> anyway guys uh after we get all this done and this button back up if you put everything in like i said we got the head unit in there the best is gonna fit leave your access out to where you can see the led lights for programming because you're gonna need that and uh yeah, we're going to button all this up and we're going to check out the radio. 
and I'll come back and show you. This thing has a killer DSP uh, EQ setup, and it. it's got like a 40 band EQ, so I'll be back with some of that. All right, I'm going to show you all just a little bit of the features in here. We, I might actually like this radio after I just bad mouthed it earlier for not wanting to fit right. But here's our EQ. But wait, there's more. See this arrow? And we're at 20 hertz. You can see that we're at 20 hertz there to 630 here. You hit that arrow. Now, over here, we got 800. And we got 20,000 here. So that's how big of a uh, EQ it's got. And you got you know, standard sounds, whatever. I ain't got to mess none of that. Your user programs. Uh, you got listening. So that's, yeah, your listening sound. Output is, here's where we got to go. And honestly, the volume on this is way too loud because... Volume three on here is like volume 20 on a normal head unit. But I want to bring the center channel, negative seven. Front, we're going to go negative seven. I'm going to bring everything down to see if we can smooth out that volume. I like that it does. We don't even, yeah, we do have a factory sub in here. But Anyway, guys, I was just wanting to show y'all some of the stuff it does. Let's see here, frequency. So you can set your frequency for like the, the tweeters up here at the dash, the front door, back door, sub. Right now it's on front and center channel, so you can pick frequency. And it looks like my high pass cutoff is 1.25 kilohertz, low pass, I don't even understand that. That's not right. But anyway, we do have 5.1 surround in this car, which I think is kind of odd. I've never had a car with a center channel. But anyway, guys, we're going to play with it a little bit. Um, I don't even know how the hell to get out of this menu. I guess I go back to EQ. Yeah, we hit the home button. And there was something cool on here when the thing started up. If I can even find it. Oh, yeah, we got car info. I ain't never got it to go past this. Um, yeah. Yeah. It would be my display screen. Like, we got a here we go. Yeah, that's all I've really got to here. I, don't, I ain't never set that up. Oh, it'll tell you what the fan on the back of the radio is doing and how, yeah, whatever. But that's the fan on the back of the radio. Uh, gallery, Google, Chrome. We ain't played with none of that shit. We ain't played with the ox. I uh, ran the USBs down here, but we ain't even plugged one in it yet. But what I was looking for, I guess it's going to be in the uh, GPS. Oh, the GPS, it says it's okay. It's doing something. But when this thing started up, it had like a mile per hour gauge over here. And I was trying to find that to pull it up to see what it would do when we actually drive. If It, it should tell you your mile per hour because of the GPS speedometer. But... I have no idea. It's just doing a bunch of crap here. Anyway, we're going to have to play around with this thing and try to find a uh, screensaver. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Can we actually change it? Like, oh, come on. Nope. That's just the only one it has. It, I guess it'll play video, everything. We got three pages of crap. We got some YouTube. I can watch me while we driving down the road. This thing has built-in Wi-Fi if we... Uh, it's connected to my Wi-Fi. Yeah, the wife's got it connected on her Wi-Fi, so we should be able to do a bunch of crap from here. But anyway, guys, I'm going to play with it more. And before I end this video, I will do an outro with all of that. I want to give a big shout-out to my homeboy Dustin here at Main Street Window Tinning. Yeah. He wearing that badass shirt today. Okay. He, got a, he, got, he, he didn't even tell me he's got shirts. I'm going to snag one of them. But I'll be back, guys. So, guys, here's the crazy thing. We're on volume one now, and you can't hear it. Volume two is pretty loud. Three, four. Switching, you can go and obtain anything you want, anything you need. Your mind's got the key ingredients to leave. They'll see with the negativity. But I think I know why. I think it's because it's playing 
into the factory amp is why it's doing this. So it's like running really high signal into the factory amp, but let's go ahead and turn that down for you guys. Here's the normal view. When you're driving, normally it'll show the map on its own and what you're listening to over here, unless you hit like the Apple Play, it'll pull that up. I like the normal view, or Deb likes the normal view. This is the view I like, but it won't do this in CarPlay because this is USB and I've got it turned down obviously, but um, there's something I like better than that. That's just kind of cool looking. I like this view. Now, obviously this is one of the USBs. So I love this view here because it'll play a song and you can still scroll through the songs like this uh, until you're doing whatever you're doing. I don't know why it's got all these bass tracks on here. I don't know what the USB was from. We just grabbed a couple, threw them in. But if we go here and go to folder, then we can change the USB that we're on. Obviously, DB Jams ISPLL is on that folder. Or that one, Park and Pound, whatever. That was one of my base ones or that I made for Deb. So, we'll go back up. Go to the other USB. Okay, go back. USB 2. You keep hitting the same one. Pick the bottom. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and it shows that we got test tone pack there that are zero dB tones for burp from back in the day. And this one has the music on it. So we would go there and look. See, it's playing the music, but you can just kind of like you can see jump DJ through. Rusticles, DJ Simon, yeah, their and if they, if they don't have a, a thumbnail, then it just shows a little record which I love this look. Um, I like that scrollability. Or if you do want to just scroll from like this, you can do it that way. You got all this over here. It's going to be great for now, when you're demoing. With that being said, yeah, it would be good for demoing. You can just pick a song. And it goes right back to this view. Um, I do really like this little carousel view. Now, I haven't been able to play with it a whole lot. Me and uh, Dustin looked to see if we could find the damn... Like, the, the initial startup, it showed a speedometer. And on the box, it showed that speedometer there. We have not been able to get that back. And I still don't know what everything does. This would just show you all the different um, windows that you have open. What is it? So, what's E Link? Z. Z Link? Hell, I don't know. No recents. You cleared it. Go back home. And see, it goes back to that, which is your USB. Um, and, and you got a home button here that takes you to that. I, I like that one too. And then you got your whole Nava or whole system here, which Deb just hit that. I didn't see. Here we go here. I was trying to go over here. What is Z-Link? I don't know. Oh, that's the same thing we were on a minute ago, which takes us back to the Bluetooth link. So we go back to that. Anyway, it's all good. I do need to jump back in the settings and turn the gain down more on the DSP area because I just realized while I was making this video that we have actually... A DSP. Uh, had, this needs to come way down because we're running an amp into a uh, amp. We're running the amp on the end dash into the amp in the car, which the volume is just too loud. So turning these gains down. Well, they only go down to negative 15. <laughs> I don't know what that's going to do. But we're going to try it, guys. And that's the thing about this car. Having that factory amp in it. Who knows? I do know we need to get away from this. Back to the uh, 
Bluetooth, yep. which I'm trying to figure out how to get back to Bluetooth music. Oh, we didn't. Nope. I need to go back <laughs> to was... normal. Nope. Guys, I'm still learning this radio. It's got... Oh, phone. Ha <laughs> ha. Go to the music there, and we can go back and listen to the effects. And see, that's a lot better. So that is better, and I got the gains turned like all the way down. You just see me do it, so that made it better. Anyway, guys, the navigation and everything on this thing is working fine. So let's just go through and summarize this, shall we? So summary of the max speeding rods android head unit does it have some cool ass features on it it definitely does y'all really seen do. you've seen the eq the camera quality is amazing this the picture and clarity on the screen is amazing we still have the cover on it guys like look look, look at this it's still got the cover There we go. See, it's still got the cover on it. So, with that being said, the, the, it'd probably look a whole lot clearer if we pull that off. We ain't done that yet. Did I have some issues fitting it in here? Absolutely. Would I recommend this head unit? Yes and no. If you have a vehicle that you can throw a double den in really easy, yeah, by all means, If you're especially if you're on a budget, it's just got a lot of cool shit. And the people that... that commented on my unboxing video they all love the head unit everybody that has it loved it they're like man it's like it don't distort or clip at max volume you got full control especially in this car with it being factory center channel car there's an rca center channel output which would do great if i could find a nice uh aftermarket higher powered speaker to put in the center of the dash i would do that you know it is just awesome for that. The features are awesome. The sound quality is awesome. It's got a lot going on. And I showed you some of the things I really like, like the built-in DSP, uh, the 40 or whatever band EQ that it has is awesome. It plays YouTube. Like it, it literally has Wi-Fi capabilities that'll connect to your phone and you, it'll play YouTube videos right off your phone. It does a lot of cool shit. But if you have a car like this one, you know, I'm used to making stuff work and I got a lot of tools and we literally had to use the factory radio brackets and do a lot of modification to them to get it to fit in there as good as it's fitting. And the volume knob is still kind of touching the edge of the factory face, you know, the factory panel which we're living with it. That's why I was like abdomen to get the steering wheel controls working. I love that it has dual USB all on the back. It's got one on the front for playing, one on the front for playing that is like high amperage charging. So you got just a whole lot of USB capabilities. It's got aux in, it's, it's got a bunch of shit going on. But what I don't like is that it's a little bigger than a regular den size head unit, or larger than a double den. That to me is kind of weird. And the wife just figured out how to get it on the speedometer. Yeah, look at this guys. That is what I've been trying forever to figure out how to do is get it to that. But the so date's wrong on the right. Shows my USB down there. It shows that up there. That date is right. It, today is the 21st. Oh, today's the 21st. And okay. it's not Monday, it's Sunday. That thing jumped a day in the future. It's China. But it's connected, I don't know, it should connect to the phone and straighten out. Anyway, there's things I love about it, things I hate about it. I hate the fact that it's bigger than a double den. 
I hate the fact that the mounting holes on the side of it are not standard to any other standard. Like, they're not going to fit a regular install kit. They're not going to fit factory kit. Like, they're, they just, they made a radio and drilled random holes in the side of it. If you have a, a custom console that you built for base or whatever, it come with some L-shaped mounting brackets. You could stick that bad boy in something like that really easy. But think about that when you're buying it, guys, or if you're interested. Overall, sound quality, great. Function, great. The screen, great. Backup camera capabilities, that all worked. It was a bitch to, uh, yeah, that's the backup camera. And guys, that's a, that's a clearer picture than the factory. It's got raindrops on it. Like, right. the camera itself in this car wasn't that great, and it looked even worse than the factory radio. But there's there's some problem, there's some good and bad with it is what I'm getting at. And I told y'all in the beginning, I'm not going to sugarcoat shit just because they gave it to me for a review. I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you what I love and hate, and that's, there's things I hate about it, things I love. Got a car, it's easy to put it in, it would be great. Um, if you've got a car like this one, that's going to need a steering wheel harness and all that stuff, I'd probably pass because, but then again, if you call access, which is a great company, they told me how to get steering wheel controls to work. So take this review for what it's worth. There's things, I, there's things I love, things I hate guys. Uh, I'm just curious to see what it's going to do when we put amplifiers on it, because that might change everything. But anyway, I'm going to end this video here, guys. Peace out, and as always, base on. You could try to play, but you're never going to beat me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody A.